Web development forms three different categories, the front-end, the back-end, and full-stack web development. The front-end is where you can interact with your browser. It is something the user is capable of seeing. The back-end is referred as the server side of a web page. It is what a user can see. It is behind the scenes, and it stores user information, like name, age, address, email, and more. These informations are of course stored in a large database. A full stack web developer is a developer that knows both the front end and the back end. Now this series is a web development series where we will learn HTML and CSS. And we know that the front end is responsible of building a responsive website for the user to access, view and interact with. That developer generally uses three main languages, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. They are the fundamentals of web development and you will find them pretty much in any website you access. Backend developers uses different types of languages, which I won't cover in this tutorial. But I have a detailed video about backend development. Click the link in the description to visit that video. Now let me give you a simple explanation for each of these three languages. HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language, is used to structure a web page. It allows you to write text, insert images, lists, hypertext or links, and more. In HTML, we use tags to define which elements are paragraphs, images, lists, and hypertext. In HTML, it is called an anchor. CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheet, is used to apply some styling on the web page, and it is linked to your HTML file. With CSS, you can color a text, let's say red. You can resize an image, add a border, or change its location. And you can change the background color also. You can do much more than that on CSS, but that was just a simple explanation on CSS. JavaScript or JS is a scripting language used to make websites more interactive. That means transforming the website from a static mode to dynamic. An example, with HTML, using the button tag, you can add a button that says subscribe. With CSS, I could add a background color of red, let's say, and change the font of the subscribe word. With JavaScript, when the user comes and click it, a clicking sound will appear and some effects. As a web developer, you need to know how the web works. When you write a URL or uniform resource locator, like the following, it will locate for you a resource on the internet, like web pages, images, videos, and so on. Now, when the searcher wrote that link, he or she is requesting a service. Now, who will provide them that service? Of course, the server. Using the HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, it is a language that helps the client and server talk to each other. We also have HTTPS, same thing but the messages are encrypted. When the server receives that message, its job is to provide the service to the client. So it will send a message to the browser which is an HTML document. The browser will read that HTML document, render it or display it and the user is able to read the content of the web page. Let's sum up this idea before jumping on another topic. The client will request a service. The browser sends an HTTP request to the server. The server then sends an HTTP response, which contains an HTML document. The browser reads this HTML document and displays for the user the web page. Okay, now that we know some information, let's jump to the technical side. Because this series is all about teaching you first HTML then in another series I'll teach you CSS, so make sure to subscribe and stay up to date and follow me along this journey. Now, there's no point of learning without a text editor, so here are some few options. VS Code, Atom, and Sublime Text. You can choose any text editor you want, I'll leave links down in the description for you to go and download them. For me, I'm gonna use Atom. If you decide to use VS Code or Sublime Text, no problem, go ahead and download them. Now, if you choose VS Code, I need you to open it, go to the marketplace, and download something called Live Server. Like this, it will allow you to visualize your HTML document on a browser. By right-clicking, press on Open with Live Server, and you can see your website on the browser. Now, before we start, I want you to right-click, go to New, and create a new folder. Now, I'm gonna name this folder HTML. Now, I'm gonna open Atom and open this folder there. So, what I did is, I go to File, Open folder, choose the folder I want or the folder I created, and I'm good to go. Now I'm gonna create an HTML file. So I'm gonna say right click, new file, and I'm gonna name it file.html. 
What you're seeing in front of you right now is the basic structure of an HTML document. This structure should exist in each HTML document you are building. What we have in line 3 is the doc type declaration. And this is actually very important because you need to tell the browser that this document that you're writing is an HTML document. So the doc type HTML or document type HTML tells the browser that it's an HTML5 document. Now, in the beginning of the video, we spoke about defining HTML elements using tags, and different elements have different functionalities. In the next video, we will talk about HTML tags and basically start writing code. Now, if you're curious and you want to see how HTML works on a browser, I'm gonna write something, and don't worry, if you don't understand it, it's okay. We'll cover it in the next video. So I'm gonna write, hello world. And now let me open it on the browser. As you can see, I've opened it on the browser and it says hello world. So yes, that HTML document actually works. Now if learning HTML interests you and you really want to follow along in my tutorial, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Alright, thanks for watching. This is TechSend and how about checking out what really is front-end development in a detailed video or check out what is back-end development.